Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. What we're going to do today is we're going to replace outer and inner tie rods. Why would you want to replace inner and outer tie rods? Well, maybe one of the boots of your tie rods is ripped and you've lost all the grease and it's gritty. Maybe the tie rod has a bunch of play in it and you've diagnosed it and that's what you need to do to get play out of your steering. For the inner tie rods, that would be something that you would be, again, diagnosing some play in your steering. You take off the outer tie rod, you pull off the boot off the steering rack, and then you manipulate the joint of the inner tie rod and determine that, yeah, it's got excessive play and I need to replace it. The other reason why you might be doing this is maybe you're just renewing a lot of things on the front end of your vehicle and you just want to replace them just because. And that's basically why we're doing it today. We're doing this job for this guy, Tony, who we met on T4R.org. He goes by Tony B66. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. And so we're gonna do his inner and outer tie rods. Let's show you what Tony bought for this job. Here's one of the inner tie rods. And here's the part number for it. Here's one of the tie rod ends. And the tie rod ends are side specific. There's driver side and passenger side. That's the number for the passenger side. And that's the number for the driver side. He also bought new boots that go over the steering rack. One thing that we didn't get was new clamps for the boots. There's an inner and outer clamp. They are reusable if you're careful with them. So we are going to reuse the old clamps for this application. That's pretty much it for all the parts that we bought for this job. The pages in the factory service manual we're going to use are in the steering section. It talks about making match marks on the tie rods before you pull them off if you're going to reuse them. We're also going to use match marks because we want to figure out how many threads are showing so we could match it up with the new tie rods when he goes to get an alignment. It's going to be pretty close to being aligned already if we do our job right. It goes to the next page and then it talks about basically disassembling the steering rack and we don't need those pages so we jump ahead to SR66 and then it shows how to get the inner tie rod off which the factory service manual doesn't actually call it an inner tie rod. They call it the rack end. Then they call the outer tie rod the tie rod end. Different terminology, but the common term is inner and outer tie rod. All right, we're ready to get started on this job. We currently have the front end of the vehicle jacked up and supported on six ton jack stands on both frame rails, and we have the front tires off. We have the factory skid plates off as well but for this job you really don't need to we just have them off because we're going to be doing some other work after filming this video we have the parking brake set and as a backup we have one of the rear wheels chalked fore and aft so we know the vehicle is not going to roll anywhere and potentially fall on us and ruin our day all right we are on the driver's side Here's the tie rod connected to the knuckle of the ball joint. And here's where the outer tie rod is screwed in to the inner tie rod. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up both sides really well with some brake cleaner or whatever you have. We're gonna put some match marks onto the threads, onto the nut, and then onto the inner tie rod. This is so we know the position of the nut in relation to all these parts so we can match those up with the new ones. We're also gonna count how many threads we have exposed on each side and that's also gonna be another indicator of how we can get the new tie rod in the same position as the old tie rod. Say for instance you weren't gonna be replacing your outer tie rod, you were just doing this for another reason like maybe you were pulling out the steering rack and replacing it and you wanted to reuse your tie rods. That's another reason why you'd wanna put match marks. Another one is maybe you're taking the outer tie rods off just so you can get a good look at the inner tie rods because you're investigating some type of play in your steering and you also wanna be able to get the tie rod back in the same position. All right, we have a match mark that's going onto the inner tie rod, onto the set nut, onto the tie rod threads. We counted the threads on both sides. On both sides, there's seven threads showing. So that makes it nice. And it also means that the alignments that Tony got on this vehicle and the previous owner 
got on this vehicle, they did it right. When I did a steering rack replacement for this guy, Dave, one of his nuts was all the way bottomed out. There was pretty much no more adjustment on one side, and then the other side had a ton of threads showing. This is nice. We know that we could just get it back on with seven threads showing on each side, and he should be pretty darn close to being aligned. His toe will be pretty much correct. Now, with that said, should he still go and get an alignment? Yes, it's good to still go get an alignment, just to be sure, but we could pretty much get it very close to in the ballpark to being perfect by doing this. The end of the inner tie rod is a 28 millimeter and the set nut is a 27 millimeter. I have these big long gear wrench box end wrenches. The 28 fits a little bit loose and I have a feeling that that's just their manufacturing and they didn't make it with nice tolerances. It's a little bit sloppy but it did hold the inner tie rod were able to break the set nut loose with a 27 millimeter. You could see how long it is. You kind of need this extra leverage and we needed an extra set of hands so you can break it free. Alignment techs that do this all day when they have it up on a lift, it's a little bit easier for them to get the leverage when you're laying on your back and you're doing this on the ground, it's a little bit harder. 27 millimeter on the lock nut 28 millimeter on the inner tie rod end and we were able to break it free. With that lock nut broken free, we're gonna break free the tie rod connection from the knuckle of the lower ball joint with the puller. The first thing we have to do to get the tie rod disconnected is we're gonna take out the cotter pin. So you just bend it, try to get it as straight as possible if you can and then it'll come out a lot easier. If you're dealing with rust, then it's gonna be a little bit hard to get out. Using a pair of dikes helps. You could just grab it and kind of lever it against the, the tie rod end and pull it out like so. Now we're just gonna zip this off with a 19 millimeter impact socket with my gun. With the castle nut free, we're gonna get the puller in place. This is just a puller that's part of an OTC kit that I'll put a link to in the video description. It's a real handy set to have. You just wanna make sure if you are gonna reuse this outer tie rod and you're using a puller, you want the puller tines in between the boot and the knuckle of the ball joint. You don't wanna be capturing the boot because then you'll tear it. You screw the rod down to where it's contacting the spindle of the outer tie rod and then we just have to tighten down and it's gonna break it free. Some people prefer the big F and hammer technique. They'll hammer on this to break free the spindle from the knuckle, but I prefer using pullers because you don't mash up your components and it works every time. So you use your ratchet of choice and your socket of choice and then you just tighten it down and it'll pop it free. like so. Now with the tie rod end disconnected from the knuckle of the lower ball joint, we can just lefty loosey this thing right out of the inner tie rod. And now it's free. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the band clamps for this boot and get that off so we expose the inner tie rod and we'll then get that off. Taking a look at this boot, I was looking at how we're gonna disconnect these inner and outer clamps. The outer one, no big deal. We noticed that the inner one, the mechanism where you can release it and reuse it was facing the front and it would be hard to get a tool in there. So I thought maybe I can twist the thing and look at that. You can twist the whole thing and basically get it in a spot where you can now get a pair of pliers on there, channel locks, whatever you have, to loosen the clamp. So for this inner clamp, you can see the tabs you need to grab to compress it, to free it. You have this tab right here, and then you have another tab down here, and then this is what you're gonna be releasing. So when you squeeze this one and this one together, you'll bring it together and it will free it of this hook right here, and that's why you can reuse this one. You don't have to destroy the clamp to get it off. You can compress it, free it of this, and it'll just come apart. For this outer one, 
you could just squeeze with whatever type of pliers you have channel locks regular slip joint pliers needle nose pliers whatever whatever you want to use and this will come off for this outer one i'm just going to use a set of bent nose needle nose pliers i'm going to compress the clamp slide it off it's not a very stiff clamp it's pretty easy to get off for the inner one see i'm going to swivel this to where it's easier to get a hold of and i'm going to just try using a pair of channel locks i'm going to grab onto the upper and lower tabs compress and then hopefully it'll just disconnect I'm finding this clamp to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. I'm going to use the channel lock still, a screwdriver so I can get underneath the clamp and lift it off that tab. There we go. Just had to have the right tool for the job. A medium sized flat tip screwdriver to get underneath this as you're compressing the two little hooks together to where you could free it. We now need to slide the boot off the steering rack. I'm just going to get my hand in there, it just popped off. And then now we have to work it over the nut on this side. So I'll have to work the boot off of this. I think I'm going to need to get the screwdriver underneath there. Let's start with a small one. Pry up. That's not doing anything. Go with the bigger screwdriver. Kind of break it free. I'm just going to slide the screwdriver underneath the whole diameter. Then maybe I can slide this thing off now. There we go. I just had to loosen up the connection of the rubber boot to the inner tie rod. And this thing has a lot more play than the new one. The new one's really nice and stiff. So I would imagine if this thing had some in and out slot, maybe it would be an indicator. But I don't feel any in and out play. It's just a little bit loose. The next thing we have to do is we have to unstake this claw washer. They stake it to where this thing won't be able to turn. So I'm just gonna grab uh, either a brass drift, maybe just the tip of a flat edge screwdriver, knock it towards the steering rack to where we can then take the inner tie rod off. I'm gonna first try to knock the washer back with my brass drift. Okay, it looks like that backside's clear. Now I'm going to do the same with the other side. Take two. We ran into an issue that we didn't foresee. And the issue is getting the inner tie rod disconnected from the steering rack. The inner tie rods are unique in the way that they require a very large wrench or special tool to get off. But they only offer a very narrow patch of material to get a wrench on. Now, of course, Toyota has a special service tool that works with this. Tony and I looked it up just for the hell of it. A company, OTC, makes it. It's 350 bucks, so not very affordable for your average do-it-yourselfer to buy. This width requires a 42 millimeter tool. And so when I did research on this job, I knew in advance that the inner tie rod took a 42 millimeter size wrench and the shaft side took a 30 millimeter wrench and I thought I was good to go and ready to do this repair for Tony. The problem is because this is such a narrow patch available, my big crescent wrench that I knew would open up to 42 millimeters doesn't fit on here very well. When this is against the steering rack, it's bolted up with the claw washer and then right up against it is the steering rack side with another very narrow 30 millimeter patch of material that you have to get onto. I have a big gear wrench, 30 millimeter open end wrench, but because the area available to slide the open end wrench onto the end of the steering rack is really narrow, I couldn't slide this thing on. Same problem with my big crescent wrench. The jaws are so wide that when you try to slide it onto the end of the tie rod, there's not enough room for the jaws to fit on this very narrow patch of material. Tony and I measured this distance and you have about a 10 millimeter patch of material to get that wrench onto. And then on the shaft end of the steering rack, it's like a nine millimeter patch of material. I did some research and I found that they make some narrow jaw adjustable wrenches. I found these on Amazon, like you can find everything on Amazon. This one is made by Bacho. They're a really high quality adjustable wrench. It actually gives you measurements for a millimeter and for a fractional on both sides but it's kind of pricey. This wrench cost me 60 bucks 
And then I have a smaller version of it, which was another 60 bucks. The other day, I test fitted these two wrenches on my 2004 runner. I put the bigger one on the tie rod side. I put this one on the steering shaft and I was able to break it free on my 2004 runner. So since this Bacho adjustable wrench is just like any other adjustable wrench, it goes from being narrower at the tip and then increasingly gets wider as you go further away from the tip. It doesn't slide on as far as I would like on both the inner tie rod and the rack shaft, but it's gonna work good enough. Now, I know for a lot of you out there watching this video, money is an issue. You're a do-it-yourselfer, that's probably one of the reasons why you're doing it yourself, because you wanna save money. If you were in that situation where you didn't wanna drop money on specialty wrenches, this is probably what I would do. You either get yourself a cheap 30 millimeter open end wrench and you get it on a grinder wheel and you grind down the sides to where it will now fit on that steering rack shaft. Another option is you just grab yourself a regular old crescent wrench and you do the same thing. You grind down the sides enough to where it's gonna slide onto the steering rack shaft so you can hold it steady while you use another tool to break free the inner tie rod. Now what would that other tool be? Well, you could just use a pipe wrench. Now, is it great to put marks on this and mar it up a little bit? No, it's not ideal, but the thing is, is that if you make marks on this from the jaws of the pipe wrench, you're really not doing any damage to the joint. The joint is here, so if you scrape this up with a pipe wrench jaw, who cares? It's not gonna do any damage to the joint itself. The whole point of this is to be able to get this worn inner tie rod off and then get it back on. That's basically what I would suggest. If money's tight, you get on this with a pipe wrench, you use your ground down 30 millimeter open end wrench or crescent wrench so you can hold the shaft and then you get the sucker off and you get a new one on. They do make specialty inner tie rod tool sets. Lyle Company, it's spelled L-I-S-L-E, I'll put a link in the video description. They actually make a specialty inner tie rod tool set with a special long, shaft that goes over the inner tie rod with these really skinny and wide opening crow's foot type of tools that the long shaft tool hooks onto to where you can get it off with a big half inch ratchet. But again, that's a specialty tool that you're gonna to to spend money on. The cheapest kit that I saw was right around $65 from Lyle. And then they have a more expensive one with more ends available in the kit for like $100. And I don't think any of those kits actually came with a 42 millimeter, so you'd have to spend another 10 or 12 bucks to get that 42 millimeter one that fits onto the inner tie rod. With all that said, I know I blah blah a lot, but I think it's important for me to give you all these different options because the inner tie rod is a kind of unique application, and I know a lot of you do-it-yourselfers out there aren't gonna have the right tools to get that thing off. What you don't want to do, what I saw in a toyota4runner.org write-up, is that some guy said, yeah, I just put the pipe wrench onto the inner tie rod and I spun it off. Well, the mistake he made is he didn't actually hold the shaft with anything, so he's transferring a lot of force to that steering rack shaft, and it's not meant to take that kind of force. That's why they have a wrench and on the end of the shaft so you could hold it steady while you apply force to get the inner tie rod off. So I would not recommend that because who knows if you're gonna damage your steering rack and now if you damage your steering rack, that's a whole lot of money. That's like $500 with online pricing. So don't do that. Let's get back underneath Tony's rig and finish this job. With the two narrow Bacho adjustable wrenches, I have the smaller of the two on the steering rack shaft and then I have the bigger one on the inner tie rod. Like I said, they're not a perfect fit, but they think they're gonna be good enough to where I can loosen it. And I'm gonna to try to now loosen the inner tie rod while holding the steering rack shaft firm with the other wrench. There we go, it came loose. The washer's holding it a little bit. I gotta unstake the washer just a little bit more, but I was able to break it loose. There we go. The washer was just holding me up a little bit. If you don't want to spend the extra money on specialty tools, just get a pipe wrench on this side, 
grind down a 30 millimeter open end wrench or a crescent wrench so it could fit on here because you could see the problem you got to get two skinny wide jaw wrenches right next to each other and i've looked at other videos of doing inner tie rods and there's actually nothing to hold here because i guess you don't have to with that style of steering rack but obviously toyota expects you to hold this shaft firm because they offer a place where you can put a narrow wrench onto it. The factory service manual just shows using an open end wrench, but no regular 30 millimeter open end wrench is gonna be narrow to fit on this unless it's some specialty tool that I haven't found yet. We're ready to get the new tie rod in. You have to first put this claw washer so the little tabs face the steering rack shaft. They go into these little slots right here. So that's the way it goes. So put it on the inner tie rod and then start screwing it in and then as it gets closer make sure that those claws fit into the grooves of the steering shaft so now that i have the inner tie rod partially screwed into the steering shaft i'm making sure that i get the claw washer tabs into the slots of the steering shaft and then i'm just going to screw this in till it bottoms out okay that's bottomed out the factory service manual says that the torque spec for this is 56 foot pounds if you have the Toyota special service tool and then it says it's 76 foot pounds if you don't have that special service tool. We don't have the ability with the uh, adjustable wrenches to get a torque spec so guess what we're gonna do? We're just gonna get it nice and tight. I pretty much know how much force it took to get off so I'm just gonna get that sucker on really tight and then we're gonna call it good. We're not gonna be able to get a torque spec because we don't have the specialty tool to do that. I have my two adjustable wrenches in place and now I'm just gonna cinch this up tight, making sure I'm pushing counter pressure on the steering rack shaft so I'm not applying the force that I'm using to tighten the inner tie rod. I'm not transferring that force to the shaft. And that is pretty darn tight. That ain't going nowhere. Now with the inner tie rod tight to the steering shaft, now we have to stake the claw washer. So I'm gonna take a brass drift and I'm gonna hit it and bend the tab over to where, say for instance, I didn't get this tight enough. Having the claw washer bent over the ends of the inner tie rod is gonna prevent it from being able to spin out and cause a, a catastrophic failure of the front end of your Toyota 4Runner or whatever vehicle you're working on. So that's why they provide that claw washer as extra protection so this thing can't unscrew itself. In order to stake this nut, it would be nice to have a little bit more room to work. So I'm gonna turn the steering wheel to the right so the shaft will extend out a little further so I'll have a little bit more room to work to stake the claw washer. So I have a regular claw hammer with a, a medium sized brass drift and I'm gonna stake the washer. So that's what you're looking for. You're just looking to bend over the end of the claw washer onto the part where you get a wrench on, and then this way the inner tie rod can't come loose even if it wanted to. It's up to you whether or not you replace this boot that goes over the steering rack shaft and whether or not you replace this inner clamp. They are reusable, I did mess it up a little bit so i decided to buy some new inner boot clamps for tony i'm gonna slide the clamp on here you could actually get it it, it comes apart so you, you could do it either way i'm just gonna slide it on here first and then slide the boot over you have to wiggle it over the end of the shaft if you follow our lead and turn the steering wheel to where you can get the shaft out a little bit it'd be better to turn it back now to where you can get the boot on easier so i'm going to turn the steering wheel back over to the left and get the boot a little bit closer so i don't have to actually stretch it out so you just fit this over it should go over pretty easily get this out of my way should snap in there there we go, finally. Gonna slide the clamp over. You're just squeezing the far end tabs together to where this little hook will slide into that slot. That's all you're gonna have to do. 
I'm gonna use my 90 degree bent nose needle nose pliers with this screwdriver. So as soon as I squeeze it enough to where it will be aligned with the slot, I'll push on the screwdriver onto this part of the band and see if I can get it to hook in place. I have a longer bent nose needle nose pliers that opens up a little wider, making it a little easier. You gotta squeeze it pretty tight because the band clamp actually stretches a little bit the way it's made and I'll describe that later and then see if I could get this thing hooked over. There we go. It just slid in place by itself. See this little horseshoe shaped part of the clamp? I think that's meant to expand as you tighten it up to you where you get a nice tight fit. So if you look at the new clamp, the new clamp has this U shaped a little bit closer together. So it appears as you tighten it up, it expands out a little bit. And then as soon as you get that little hook over, it snaps back. So this is kind of like a little tensioning part of the clamp to hold it really nice and tight. So now we have the inner clamp boot firmly attached to the steering rack. And then we just got to get the outer one in. This outer one's a lot easier. Just use your tool of choice, channel locks, needle nose pliers. Just compress it, fit it over the end. Voila, that's it. Now we have to get our new outer tie rod in. And first what we have to do is we have to make match marks on that to where we're gonna get it in the same positions. What we found is that we had seven threads on the outer tie rod exposed after the set nut. We're gonna get the new outer tie rod set nut in the right position, make some paint marks on it to where now we can get it in the exact position the old one was in. We have the old tie rod with the set nut next to the new tie rod. One thing to note, the new tie rod doesn't come with the new set nut or lock nut. It does come with a new castle nut to connect up the tie rod to the knuckle of the ball joint for this application right here. So what we're gonna do is we're looking at our match marks on the old tie rod. This is the driver side or you can call it the left. It's marked with an L for left or driver side. This paint mark right here looks to be right about at the one o'clock position. So I'm gonna grab my same paint pen, right directly straight up is 12 o'clock. I'm gonna make a mark just a little bit over to where it would be right at about the one o'clock position, just like the other one. Counting the exposed threads, six fully exposed, and then it looks like the set nut is right even, right on top of the seventh thread. So now we're gonna take the set nut off and screw it onto the new one and get it with the same amount of threads showing. I have the set nut onto the new tie rod and I'm counting the threads and I have one, two, three, four, five, six total threads exposed. And it looks like the set nut is even with the seventh thread. So now we're gonna get this onto the vehicle. Now with the set nut in the right position, I'm just gonna screw the outer tie rod into the inner tie rod. Everything is firmed up. I still have six threads showing. The outer tie rod is firmly against the inner tie rod. And now we have to grab our wrenches and tighten it in place. Now that I have the tie rod in the right position, we're gonna get the new castle nut that was supplied with the outer tie rod and screw that down. And we're gonna to torque the castle nut to 67 foot-pounds, 67 foot-pounds. There we go, 67 foot-pounds. So there's two holes in the outer tie rod spindle, and if you're lucky, one of them is gonna line up with the castle nut. But it looks like neither one is lining up, so I'm gonna tighten it a little bit more because it's better to tighten it more than loosen it. So I'm just gonna tighten this a little bit more, a little bit at a time, and make sure you don't go too tight. A little bit more. Now it's lined up. Now I'm gonna slide a new cotter pin in, it's never a good idea to use an old cotter pin. Use a new one every time. And the outer tie rod did come supplied with the new cotter pin. And there it is, like so. Now that we have this firmly connected to the knuckle of the ball joint, we're gonna get the set nut tight against the inner tie rod. There is a torque spec for this. They say it's 41 foot-pounds. But because I don't have a special tool, like a crow's foot that can attach to a torque wrench or a special service tool, I'm just gonna get these nice and tight with my big wrenches. 
the 27 millimeter and the 28 millimeter and just get it nice and tight. Do you think the alignment tech is gonna to torque this to spec? No, they're not. They're just gonna grab their big wrenches and tighten it down and call it good. They're not gonna to torque it to spec for you. I have my two wrenches on there. I'm using opposing pressure and that looks like it's nice and tight. You can pretty much see that I have my paint marks still lined up. Tony can be assured that his vehicle is gonna be pretty much aligned but again it's always good practice to get an alignment after doing a job like this all right we are done with this job it did throw us some curveballs the main curveball is the fact that the inner tie rod is a very unique thing to have to take off your vehicle it requires a big wrench 42 millimeter wide wrench and a very narrow jaw wrench which who has something like that? It's not a tool that you normally see in your everyday do-it-yourselfers toolbox. So what do you do? If money's tight, here's what I would do. You grab a cheapo 30 millimeter open end wrench. You get it online on Amazon or maybe you go to Home Depot and buy one if they, if they sell one that size. You get on your bench grinder, you grind it down to where this will fit onto the shaft of the steering rack so you could hold it steady. Now for the inner tie rod, what do you use for that? Well, I would just use a pipe wrench on it and spin the sucker off. Because unless you wanna invest in something like I did with a specialty type of narrow jaw adjustable wrench, or you wanna buy some specialty inner tie rod tools that I mentioned and I'll put a link in the video description to those and these adjustable wrenches you're pretty much kind of stuck because it's not an easy thing to get off so if you mar up your old inner tie rod and then you mar up your new one a little bit it's not a big deal because you're not affecting the joint the joint is still protected you're just gonna maybe make some marks on the outer surface of the inner tie rod and you're probably gonna be okay. What you don't wanna do, what I saw in a toyota4runner.org write-up, is a guy said, yep, I just took the boot off, I got on it with a pipe wrench and I spun it off. He made no mention to holding the steering shaft firm with a wrench. And it's obvious Toyota meant for you to hold that shaft steady because if you're applying all that force to the inner tie rod and you're not holding the shaft, all that force is being transmitted to the shaft. And it seems like to me it makes sense that if they provided a, they provided a spot where you can get a wrench on, they expect you to hold that firm while you're applying the force to get it off, to get it off and to get it back on. It is best practice to get an alignment after you do something like this you change your outer tie rods, you mess with changing your lower control arm bushings, anything that's really gonna affect your alignment, it's always best to get a new alignment. But if you did like we did and you made, and you were really careful about counting the threads and getting the new tie rod in the same exact position as the old tie rod, then you can pretty much you know, roll the dice that your alignment is pretty spot on and maybe you can wait till you buy yourself a new set of tires or something of that nature or something else changes that requires you to get an alignment. I could see if, you, if money is tight, then why not roll the dice that you did do the job pretty darn close to perfectly and you don't necessarily need to go out and get an alignment and worry about your tires are gonna be tracking down the road like this or something like that. But anyways, with all that said, Thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. We'll be back with more videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye.